Hello again, you sick, twisted weather freaks. Welcome to another fun-filled, action-packed, and intellectually stimulating edition of This Week in Weather. I'm your host and meteorologist, DT from Weather Risk, your captain of chaos, your colonel of confusion, your command of catastrophe. Let's talk about This Week in Weather. And here on this February 8th, uh, with the Super Bowl coming up, and a probable Eagles victory, mind you. We're going to be talking about an event here on Super Bowl Sunday, February 12th, that could produce significant snow accumulations in the mountains of western North Carolina, southwest Virginia, the Shenandoah Valley, especially the southern half of the Shenandoah Valley, southeast portions of West Virginia, uh, southeast 25, maybe 25 percent, maybe a third of Kentucky, and northeastern Tennessee. Now, this is an unusual event because it's an elevation event, and it's coming in the middle of a mild pattern. So let's get right to it, and I'll show you what's going on here. Here's temperatures here for today. On this uh, February 8th, you can see we had 80s, you know, in the, de oh, excuse me, at 70s and 60s in the deep south here, a lot of places. Uh, you can see very warm temperatures from Mississippi all the way into southern uh, Virginia, and 60s across here. And now, interestingly enough, you know, the I-70, which runs right across through here, you know, from Missouri, central and southern Illinois, Indiana, Ohio, to the southern, you know, Pennsylvania, Maryland, right there. All this is fairly silly seasonal air in the 40s. So all the warm air is pretty much south of Interstate 70, where the ridge was. And uh, we can see that here on the upper air map. There's the system, which is our system, uh, our first system. There's the second one. This is the one that's going to cause a snowstorm, probably on November 12th. And this is the one which is going to bring about the initial event here on uh, Friday, or Thursday or Friday. So a lot to talk about. One piece of energy here as well. Another one here. Another one here. And I see this orange area. That's the ridge. Why it's so warm. So the, again, if you notice the lines here, I know this is a little advanced for you all, but just look at the lines. Do you don't see any lines coming out of Canada? See how the lines are all coming from the Pacific right across the country. You know, wavy. But this is all mild Pacific air. All the really cold air is still stuck up in Canada again. So now. I posted this yesterday over on the uh, Medium page and over on the uh, Facebook page. This is the upper air pattern, and this is from yesterday, but it still shows the same general idea. So here is uh, for Friday at evening, and we have the first trough is here. You can see it on the black line there shows the trough axis, the alignment. Here's the other trough on the west coast. Now there's our ridge, which is bringing us the really warm weather. That's going to move off the coast Friday as the trough approaches, and that drives a cold front, which will end the warm temperatures. Now, what happens is that this system, as you can see, becomes closed up or low. You see it. So does the, the one coming in from uh, Northern California. It drops down to Los Angeles and San Diego as a closed up or low there and another one here. So you have two closed up or lows and there's a big ridge to the north. So this means that the, this means that the surface low, once it develops, is probably going to move very slowly, crawl up the coast, and then it's going to be forced to, to turn out to sea because of the strong ridge over New England. So... If the temperatures were cold enough, this could be a very substantial snowstorm for the middle Atlantic region, but they aren't. We'll see how this works out here in a second. Now, this is uh, the uh, midday, uh, uh, excuse me, this is, excuse me, the evening, the 18Z European. So uh, here we can see the uh, two pieces of energy. Now, this is the first low, which is coming up here. This is going to drop down, but this is the first piece of energy here, and it's going to... Um, this will cause the initial low pressure I bring in the rain on Thursday into Friday into the Great Lakes and this is the Midwest, the Delta region. The cold front hits the East Coast on Saturday, then it stalls and we get our potential winter storm. So this is the first system. And now here is our Thursday night. Okay, there's the first low. So you see this low here? It goes to here. See that? Right to Michigan. Right through Missouri, Illinois, into Michigan. And there's the second piece of energy dropping down towards Texas. All right? So now when this feature reaches eastern Canada, the cold front will come through the east coast and the warm period will end. Here, this is what it looks like at the surface. See? The low goes up to Michigan. You see that on the left-hand side? This is valid as of um, Thursday night, early Friday morning. Then the cold front pushes through. Now notice the cold front stalls across Georgia, the Carolinas, into southeast Virginia, where it rains most of Friday. All right? And the cold air comes in behind the front. Now what happens here is that from this image here, let me blow this one up, okay? This is what happens next. See that? Pretty darn impressive. So what happens is, the up, the, go back to here, this upper low drops down to Arkansas, Louisiana, this one right here, and it becomes a closed upper low in the southeastern states, which you can see here. 
right over Georgia. Now, again, and look at the one over California. Two very big, powerful, closed, deep, low per cutoff lows. This is a big deal for California. You're going to bring a lot of significant precipitation and maybe even some severe weather to California and the southwestern states. Very unusual to see a big close a low like this. And then you see another one in Georgia. And it causes the low pressure to develop here on Sunday morning on the South Carolina, North Carolina coast. And then what happens is, now here is interesting. This is 7 a.m. Sunday morning, okay? See the time, 7 a.m. Sunday morning, right? Got it? Now look what happens. This is 18 hours later. This is, uh, make sure I got the right, 7 a.m., 18 hours later. This is 1 p.m. Monday, and look where the closed low is. It's just east of Norfolk. So it goes here, and it goes, takes 18 hours to do this. Uh, very slowly moving. See that? Look at that slow movement here. Very impressive. Okay, northern Georgia to, had, to, to, to Norfolk. Very slow moving in 18 hours. You can almost walk faster than that. Or, well, ride a bicycle faster than that. And <clears throat> that is gonna, this is going to be a very slow moving system. Again, if the temperatures were cold enough and we were looking at a typical regular winter, we would be looking at a monster snowstorm for the Mid-Atlantic. But they aren't cold enough. We'll see for most areas. We'll see that. Now, the uh, MJO, this is interesting. Excuse me. <clears throat> here is the MJO right now in phase. You can see on November 7th, here it is in phase four. All right, so phase three and four are very, very bad for East Coast snowstorms. Now, I brought this up because this goes back to December 30th. Back in December, there were some, a lot of projections here that the MJO for January is going to go into phase eight and phase one, which are really nice snowstorm patterns for the East Coast. But instead, look what happened. You see how it jumped into the neutral circle here? For, for eight and one, and then it came back out in three. So that well, well, I'm going to show you why that's important later on, but <clears throat> keep this movement here where it did not go into phase eight and phase one like it was supposed to, but stayed in the neutral circle. Now, most of the models here, as you can see, uh, over the next week or so, this takes us into uh, February 22nd. The Europeans on the left, this is the, G the, the GFS. They all have it going into phase four right here, and then follow the red line, phase five, six, very rapidly into phase seven. Now, the European, by February 22nd, wants to bring into phase eight. See that? The operational European. And the GFS is close to doing that as well. That would be very nice if you get into phase eight, because this is what phase eight does um, for the pattern. The phase eight does this. Huge trough on the east coast, big blocking to the north, winter storms galore. That's what phase eight does. The problem is, I don't know if it's going to get to phase eight. So we'll see how that plays out. In the meantime... Okay, if we're looking at where you are right now, this is the upper air pattern for phase six. So by the time we get to this storm here, which will be February 12th or 13th, let's see where the projections have it. February 12th or 13th, you can see it. There's February 12th. That's phase six, phase six. Now, so what does phase six look like? Well, it's not great for the East Coast. You see a big ridge here off the Southeast Coast, and then your big trough negative anomaly in Seattle and British Columbia. So the jet stream comes down and then goes into the Texas then goes up over across the ridge. So the, the low pressure areas track right along the black line. You see that? They don't go to the east coast. They go up the Appalachians, which is pretty much what this system kind of indicates. So phase six is not good for east coast winter storms at all. All right, let's take a look at the maps here. Now, this is the um, <clears throat> 12Z GFS. And you can see, if you can see it, there's the center of the low right there. Now, all the cold air is on the northwest side of the system, the GFS. All these yellow, red lines represent really warm air. So it's raining heavily at Richmond and uh, Norfolk and the Outer Banks and Raleigh and Fayetteville and that sort of stuff. But on the back side of it, it goes over to snow. You see this? Again, so this is 7 a.m. They got snow in Greensville, Spartanburg, and then snow in the west of North Carolina, uh, ice in southwest Virginia. And then this is now 1 o'clock on Sunday. Look how slow this low moves. It starts off right here, Wilmington, and it's not even in Elizabeth City six hours later. Let's blow this up a little bit so you can see it. This is a very slow-moving system. Now, on the northwest side of it, again, where the cold air is, and only on the northwest side, you're getting sleet and freezing rain and then snow in western North Carolina, maybe into northwest South Carolina. But Raleigh's rain, Richmond's rain, Charlottesville's probably a sleet rain mix, the Salisbury, Tappahannock, 
uh, all of Hampton Roads, it's all heavy rain in this area. But in the Shenandoah Valley, it's snowing and sleeting and freezing, raining very nicely here. And then this is now by um, uh, Sunday night. And you can see that the low is actually dropped south again. And there's your frozen precipitation here in western North Carolina, southwest Virginia, getting snow heavy and then snow and sleet in central and northern portions of the Shenandoah Valley. Now, the, the, the key to all this is the temperatures. Let me show you what I mean. This is the GFS here from early this morning, the 6Z GFS. So let me, this is the top one is 7 a.m. Okay, so Richmond is 34, Raleigh's 35, DC is 34, Philadelphia is 34, Baltimore is 34. But look at the temperatures. Charlottesville's 30, the Shenandoah Valley into Southwest Virginia, Roanoke, Lexington, Staunton, Harrisonburg, Front Royal, Stroudsburg, Martinsburg, Hagerstown, they're all 28, 29 to 30 degrees or colder. So they're cold enough for it to be all snow at 7 a.m. Now, is 34 degrees is cold enough for snow in Richmond? It's going to be very borderline. Maybe Charlottesville gets some snow mixed in here, snow and rain mix for a couple hours before it goes over to rain. Maybe uh, Danville does, maybe uh, uh, D.C., but that's about it. Once you get to I-95, it's too warm. Now, the other issue here is that, okay, that's 7 a.m. This is 1 p.m. Oops, bring it forward here. This is 1 p.m. on, uh, excuse me, no, this is Sunday. Yeah, this is a Sunday at 11 a.m. Let's try it again. Sunday, 11 a.m. Now, Richmond's temperature is 37 degrees. It's gone up. Washington, D.C. is 36. Baltimore is 35. Philly is 37. And Charlottesville and Staunton are good to mid-30s. So at this point, the rain may be, the snow may be changing over to rain, even in the valley, if the temperatures get this warm. Now, the, of course, that's, this is a prediction. This is a forecast. If, the other hand, the precipitation come down is really heavy on the northwest side of this coastal storm, then it could stay all snow in the valley. But that's, so that's the one possibility, one concern. Now, to show you what the GFS is doing in midday, this is the snow map it has on the left-hand side from Pivotal Weather. You can see it's got heavy snow anywhere from 6 to as much as uh, 15 inches in some places, even higher in the mountains. In west of North Carolina, the ski resorts do great. Southwest Virginia, Roanoke gets blasted, Whiteville, all those places, Abington, they get hammered. Uh, and then it pushes up into Lexington and eastern portions of uh, southeast portions of West Virginia. So now that may be overdone, but if this is overdone, this is the ensemble mean. And again, this is the 6Z run, the GFS. That's not bad. Now, I, this is two inches is bullshit. Okay, you're, if you're going to 37 degrees, you're not going to get two inches of snow in Richmond or Washington. So this is crap. But in here, this is not a bad solution. Here's the European from midday. All right. There's the low moving very slowly, 7 a.m., Wilmington, 1 p.m. Look how slow this thing is moving. 1 p.m. and then 7 p.m. So it starts off here and it goes to here in 12 hours. Very slow movement. And again, notice here the European is very clear about this. The heavy precipitation is right on the western side only in the elevations. Okay. Charlottesville's rain, Richmond's rain, Ro Roanoke's rain, Hampton Road, excuse me, Raleigh is rain, uh, Richmond, Hampton Roads, all of the Delmarva, D.C., Baltimore, Philly, New Jersey, New York City, they're rain. It's in the elevated areas here, the mountains, where you get the big snow on this. And to, in terms of what the European is showing us possible snow, there you go. Now, it actually has a bullseye of 20 inches of snow on the Virginia-North Carolina border. That's, I'm sure that's way overdone, obviously. But there's a, this is a widespread band of uh, 2 to 8 inch snow when you look at it, which is very reasonable, very reasonable here. Now, well, you'll get, well, it has three, three inches up towards uh, Ashburn and um, uh, in the Northern Virginia area, um, you know, a place like that. Um, Ashburn, one of them, maybe called Pepper Warrington. Uh, so that's possible. I don't think it'll be that much. I think there'll be a lot more rain mixed in, especially, if, again, if the temperatures warm up. Uh, but it's possible maybe they could get a couple of inches in those areas. I think, again, this is an elevation snow. I've always thought that. I still think it's an elevation snow. So if you're not above 1,500 feet, you're going to have problems here. This is the European Ensemble from midday here on uh, Friday. Now, the black line shows you the 850 isotherm, which is the, essentially the rain snow line one mile above the ground. So in other words, the precipitation has to be cold enough one mile above the ground to, to begin the journey as snow. 
all right, which it does. The question then becomes, is it cold enough, 32 degrees or colder, from the cloud all the way down to the ground so it stays as snow? That's the issue. And within the black line area on the northwest side here in this image, this is cold enough for snow in southeast, potentially for in southeast Kentucky, eastern Tennessee, northern Georgia, northwest South Carolina, and the western half of North Carolina, and a good portion of southwest Virginia and the southern half of the Shenandoah Valley. This is as a valid Sunday morning. The red lines here, let me uh, bring this up. You can bring it one last second here. Okay. The red lines here, these red lines represent very warm temperatures, 50s in eastern Virginia and uh, maybe near 60 in eastern North Carolina. Very warm temperatures on the eastern side of the system. Okay, so now this is 1 p.m. on Sunday. Same sort of thing. There's your pocket of cold air which could support the snow. Okay, but if anything, the black line appears to be moving further inland because as this low develops here, it, right, the east wind, there's no big high to the north. You see that? There's no big cold high. So the east winds drive the warm air in from the ocean. And as a result, you can see this on the red lines. Notice where the red line is here. Let's look at, let's say, uh, plus uh, three, plus six. The plus six line, it goes up here through Raleigh and then very close to Norfolk, okay? And then if you look at one, uh, 1 p.m., you can see that the plus three line is now well is in Richmond, well to the north and up, headed towards Salisbury, Maryland. So the warm air is pushing inland with the low. And then finally, this here is 7 p.m. Now the low is in Norfolk, Virginia, but it's now moving off the coast, so the winds are turning around to a northerly direction, and now we have temperatures cold enough to support snow again in much of the Shenandoah Valley in West Virginia, southwest Virginia, the mountains of western North Carolina. So even though the European has that much snow, if you look at the ensemble mean, it's showing this much snow. Very reasonable. This seemed like a good idea. Three to six, maybe four to eight inch snowfall based upon the European ensemble. This seems very reasonable. I don't have reason to go against it. So that's where we stand with that event. So um, what does that mean? Okay, it means, again, everybody out of the mountains, this is rain. There could be a period of snow around in the Piedmont areas of North Carolina, Virginia. That's around Highway 15. Look on your Google Maps, you'll see it. That's called the Piedmont Highway. And Central North Carolina, let's say Greensboro, up into you know Charlottesville, um, and then over towards Culpeper, Warrington, Leesburg. There could, into, into uh, Frederick, Maryland, there could be a period of snow Sunday morning, but the temperatures warm up. So it's doesn't, it doesn't last at all. Um, so I don't have any problem at this point if, you know, in these areas, in, in the Shenandoah Valley, the southern half of West Virginia, eastern Kentucky, west North Carolina, seeing three to six or four to eight snow, maybe more, depending on the elevation and the mixing. So that's what it looks like to me. Okay, beyond that, what happens here? Not much. Let's take a look at our teleconnections now. Here's our teleconnections again. This here is the red line separating it, the eastern, the Pacific teleconnections, the Atlantic teleconnections here. So as we look at them, we'll see here's the Atlantic. This is the Arctic Oscillation and, or the polar vortex. And this here is the Greenland block, the NAO. So the Greenland block is positive. This is not what you want to see if you want cold or snow all the way through to February 24, 25. And the Arctic Oscillation has a little bit of a dip here around the 15th or 16th, and then it goes positive again. Again, not what you want to see for East Coast winter weather. And then on the Pacific side, well, here's the uh, Eastern Pacific Oscillation, the Alaskan Ridge. It does go somewhat negative or neutral after fe February 15th. Uh, so that would be kind of decent. That allows a little bit of cold air in, but the P&A remains strongly negative with the trough here bringing more systems coming on the Pacific Ocean into California and the southwestern states, which means a trough on the west coast, ridge on the east coast. Now, some of the models are forecasting. I mentioned this in the newsletter. The uh, MJO going into phase eight. This is the CFS, the American Climate Model, and you can see it clearly in February, going in late January, late February into March, going into phase eight and phase one, which is this a big, very, very stormy pattern and big negative anomaly on the East Coast. This is the snowstorm signal. Phase eight in neutral conditions, neutral conditions, that's snowstorm for the East Coast. But the problem is the other models, again, look what it does. It gets in the phase four, then five, then six. Then seven, and when it goes to phase eight, boom, it goes back into the neutral circle. 
Here's the European. Phase four, phase five, phase six, phase seven, phase eight. Nope, sorry, boom, back into the neutral circle. We cannot get this MJO to go into phase eight and stay there for any couple more than a couple of days. And, and even if it tries to do that, it goes back in the neutral circle. This is very bad news if you're counting on a colder late February and March, because this means it's not happening. Let me show you what I mean. It shows up in the models. Okay, so this here is February 15th, a week from today, Wednesday. Look at the huge trough in the Rockies, came in from California. And there's your, there's your ridge on the East Coast. This is mild again. Okay, now this trough finally moves across the Midwest, reaches the East Coast, a big cold blast, February 17th, 18th, and 19th, but then it's gone. And then another trough comes in, and you can see it. There it is, February 21. Look at that. Another big ridge on the East Coast, big trough on the plains and, and the Rockies, more mild east of the Mississippi River, and especially from Maine down to Georgia, right through February 21. Now, there's been some speculation here that late February and March, the polar vortex is going to break down. This is the European ensemble prediction. This shows you the winds. So when the winds are strong, you have a strong polar vortex, and it doesn't do anything. When the winds get weak, it means the polar vortex could split because there's warming going on in the, over the Arctic region. The polar vortex can split, which means a piece of it can come south. And when it comes south, it brings cold air and much stormier weather patterns at the jet stream and at the surface. So if you like, if you want a late season surge of winter, you, you love this. You want to see this. You want to see this. Okay. Then it reaches a peak around um, Feb February 20th, and then it levels off, but still says relatively negative. There's a 0 9, negative all the way through till most of March. This would be good. Now, what does this look like? Okay. This is the polar vortex split. There's the vortex. There's the high. And what happens here is on the GFS, this gives you an idea of what happens. You see how the vortex splits here into two pieces, one there and one here, one here and one there. And you have the blocking high where the bubble of warm air is over the North Pole. So that's what it does. It splits it into two pieces, here and here. And there's a blocking high. Now, again, this is great. Maybe it's going to happen. But so far, looking at the model of data going up through February 20th, I don't see any sign of it. Not yet. It would be great with weakening La Nina if we could get into phase eight. But as I showed you, a lot of the models are backing off of that and don't get us into phase eight. So the issue is still up in the air. This is meteorologist DT from Weather Risk. I'll see you over on the Twitter page and over on the uh, website and the Facebook page.